back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, welcome. My name is Chelsea. On this channel, I make all sorts of cute things. Currently, I am embarking on a journey of making some cute little creatures. And in today's video, I am making this galaxy inspired sloth. It kind of looks like one of the little guys from Fantastic Beasts or something. But in my last video, where I made a little niffler, I asked what you would like to see on this channel. And quite a few people said a sloth. So I thought I'd take it one step further and just make like this little galaxy inspired sloth. Off. so if you want to see how I made it then just keep on watching. The first step when making my creatures is to use tin foil to make a little kind of skull for the creature that I'm making. I usually try and make this out of multiple layers to build it up into the shape I want to and then using Fimo Soft I usually just take a ball of that and roll it out to create the face part of the tin foil and just start the clay kind of base. I then move on to the eyes, so to make the eyes I do all sorts of techniques but I'm just going to show you here how I make the all black ones. I just take some glass kind of flat back cabochons and I just paint them or use a paint pen, use acrylic paint, whatever is on the back of those so when you pop them into your clay you're just left with the glazed kind of shiny glassy finish on the front. I like to always make sure mine are kind of stuck in really well and then molded in as well with clay going over the top of them so there is no chance of them escaping or getting out so I like to incorporate the eyelids into this part at this stage. Because I'm making a sloth I have made the eyes more almond in shape so it looks like a little sleepy sloth and I then decided I needed more of a protrudent face so this is where I build up the clay as well. So I usually like to do multiple bakes when I am making the head, sculpting the face and all of that. So before baking for the first time I am just adding some texture with a dotting tool which you can see here. Once I have then baked it, as you can see the clay then looks a little bit darker so when you put new fresh clay on it then it looks completely different colour but this is the exact same clay and once baked it will remain the same. I then popped on the texture that I originally put on just to blend the two pieces of clay out and then I just started building up the face a little bit more just adding more and more clay as I went. So I decided to add a big nose in the middle. I know sloth's nose aren't quite so big but I thought this would make it a little bit cuter and I just molded and sculpted that away making sure it was nice and blended in to the rest of the head. I then sculpted its little face. I went through about three or four different expressions until I was really happy and then I solidly baked it again and as you can see all of the colours of the clay have kind of like blended into one and it looks like I've only like moulded it from one piece basically but there was like several steps there. For the base of this piece I decided to paint it in the, I always get this wrong but it's the PBO, PBO, PBO studio acrylics in the colour violet and that gave me a perfect bluey purpley base. I then let that dry and once that was completely dry I moved on with some white acrylic and some of that purple again, mixed it up and then started painting on like hair like texture just to lighten up loads of areas of the face as well as bring in extra colours. Because I decided to be weird and make this into a galaxy sloth, quote unquote, rather than a normal one, I decided to bring in some galaxy-esque colours. So I used um, a pink, a blue, um, some extra whites in there and just started blending that all throughout the colours of the sloth's face just to give it a little bit of extra dimension again. Really, really liked how this turned out. Definitely would be into painted on hair texture in the future and yeah, really happy with that. Like I said, I added some blue along the top, not typical sloth colours, obviously this is a bit of a weird creature but really happy with it again. Once all of the colours were then blended and I was happy with them, I then just took a needle and some white acrylic again. The white acrylic I use is the PBO one in just white opaque, it's the best white acrylic I've ever used and I will leave a link to it down in the description down below just in case you're after some really good acrylic paints, I would highly recommend them. Not an ad, just I really really love them. Once I had the kind of star detailing and everything like that, I then just took the sloth's head and I sewed a round piece of faux fur fabric. I then just glued along the kind of edge of the face as well as stuffing in behind so that I was left with a nice cute little blue and purple sloth head. 
I then made a little body up in the same way. I actually weighted it down using some um, toy palettes and then I stuffed the rest of the shape with some um, just polyester stuffing. I then just trimmed down some of the fur and started attaching the head via just sewing it by hand to make sure it was fully secure on there. I did use some clay tools just to make sure that none of the fur was getting trapped inside because when you are sewing with such long furs it can sometimes get you know bubbled up and stuff and that's not what we want, we want a nice frothy looking sloth. I then took my scissors and just started trimming some of that fur because I know it is very long, I still left it pretty long but to be honest I could do with shaving it down but I just gave it a little bit of a trim. I then moved on and made the hands and the legs, I made them both in the exact same way, just the three toed kind of sloth hand feet thing going on. I made a little wire skeleton and then just basically covered that in polymer clay. This was really really fiddly but once that was done I painted it in the exact same way as I did the face. To add the arms, I used some craft wire, attached that right through the body so that it was fully secured and then I just sewed the faux fur all the way around that, attaching the hand to the very top. To attach the hand, I actually used the same wire that was still in the hand and the wire in the arm. I also reinforced it with a little bit of super glue as well as kind of stitch all the fur around it and then super glued some of that fur down as well. As you can see here on the second hand, it gives kind of a better insight to what I'm doing in the arms. So I've got the wire going all the way through the body and out to make the kind of skeleton of the arm. I then attach the hands with the wire and the wire kind of, you know, cuttery, pliery thingies. Made sure that was really, really secure again. And then I just took some more faux fur with the edge trimmed down so that it's easier to attach it to the body and then I just hand sewed it to the body and then hand sewed it up around the wire. Hopefully that makes sense. As you can see here, folding the edges, sewing it around the wire to encapsulate that wire. Now I know some people do like to pad out their arms, like use kind of wadding around the wire, but because this faux fur is so thick, it's classed as a super luxury fur apparently, um, it's just got a really really thick kind of backing on it so I didn't feel it was necessary to add the wadding around the wire because you couldn't feel it through the faux fur anyway. Like I said once you get to the hand I just hand sewed it and then you can use glue to reinforce this as well and that's exactly what I did. So I just hand stitched together all the way up towards the hand then I took a few stitches around and then added in little bits of glue, stuck down the fur, added in little bits of glue, stuck down the fur and that way I just had the best of both worlds, gluing, stitching and wiring up, these hands are not going anywhere. I used the same exact technique on both of the legs, so using the wire through the body, posted through, wrapping around in wire. Once I had all of the arms and legs attached, I then just went in and just started cutting away at some of the faux fur. I wish I did a little bit more trimming because he kind of does look like a little blue yeti or something but I'm really happy with how he turned out overall. So this little guy took me around about four days to make I think quite a little while just because I honestly just had nothing to base it on. It just came out of my own mind which is kind of weird. Um, I feel like he's kind of turned out like the little, um, is it a demigod or something from um, Fantastic Beasts? He kind of looks like a little slothy type creature, but I just absolutely love it. I feel like it kind of looks like a cross with like a yeti and stuff, but I have made the arms and the hands wired. The body and the head is all soft based and then the legs are wired. I didn't actually wire the feet, which is kind of annoying. So like these bits here don't bend in the position, whereas the hands do stay in the bended position but yeah you can kind of hang him up on different things make him just like float about you can just position his legs and all sorts and I don't know I really really like it I think it's really sweet if I was to do this one again I would definitely make him all wired just to be able to do even more things I wonder if I can hang him up on my arm and come on baby like you can kind of wrap them up and he's so cute. It's like your own little buddy. I've made little stars and stuff all on his eyes. Don't know if you can see here. And these eyes here I actually made just all black instead of painting them, which I really, really like. I think it just makes it look cute. I'm not sure I like it on the darker background of the face. I think it kind of 
does make him look a little bit scary. Um, but yeah, I think it's really sweet. I'm really happy that I've made this and spent the week kind of creating this little guy because he's so cute. He's even got a little fuzzy bum. But yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any particular requests on what you would like to see me make in this little series going forward, then please do let me know because I do listen. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye!